This week, Efficiency Vermont released its third report on energy burden, comparing communities across the state on what they pay for the essentials of electricity, thermal, and transportation, using a simple math equation of cost versus median income. What it produces are maps that highlight the areas of the state that could use more attention, more programs, to lower or just ease their burden. This morning, the Managing Director of Efficiency Vermont is here to share their latest findings. Peter Walk, thanks for joining us here on NBC5 In-Depth. Thank you, Brian. All right, let's start with the, the report. Tell the viewers why this report, your third edition of it, is so important. Sure, it gives us a sense of, of not only energy spending in the state, but how it impacts uh, families on the ground, what it means for those households who are struggling to, uh, to, to pay for the high energy costs. Um, it, it interacts both the cost of energy with household income to understand sort of what, uh, what the overall burden is and uh, on, on Vermonters and their uh, ability to afford their energy. You use kind of a, a simple equation yep. in, in deciding how these people and how these communities fall, right? Yep. So it's very simple. It is the co total cost of your energy and that's electricity, heating, and transportation over mm -hmm. their income. Yeah. Um, and so, and we look at it, uh, the, we've tr traditionally looked at it at the town level. Mm -hmm. This year we added some new uh, analysis that looks at it at the census block group level, which just allows us to dig down into some of our more heavily populated areas to understand the variations within a community about what the uh, total burden looks like. Now the amount that people are paying for services obviously is going to change. We hear so much about inflation. Everything mm -hmm. costs more than it sure. did a couple of years ago. But the percent of the income used went unchanged at 11 percent. Did that surprise you? Uh, yes, in some ways and maybe not in the ways that you would imagine, right? So we saw that uh, energy, you know, we've all seen energy costs rising, right? right? Uh, we have seen the costs of gasoline and heating fuel go up over the last couple of years. Our electricity prices are a little more stable, uh, in part because we're a regulated state where so we have some, um, whereas some of our neighboring states have seen drastic increases in the price of electricity, we're not seeing that here in Vermont because of the way we are regulated. What, what I was you know, pleasantly surprised to see is that in many instances, the income has gone up at the same levels. We've seen over 10% increase in median income across multiple communities um, in a way that uh, is positive to see. Obviously, that increases overall people's all quality of life. But as you said, that overall energy burden remains on average at 11%. The most burdened communities, uh, the Northeast Kingdom. Yes. Uh, that didn't surprise you, right? Uh, it, it is it is consistent with the what we've seen in the past that the largest share of that energy burden is transportation mm -hmm. across the state and for those communities who are traveling long distances to get to work to get to job sites uh, to get their kids to school right. to go to doctor's appointments uh, that is traditionally where we see that high energy burden and it's so it's not surprising that in uh, less densely populated areas like the Northeast Kingdom, uh, we're seeing that energy burden being high. So in reading this report, uh, how do we change the trend of rural areas being the most burdened when it comes to these costs sure. for transportation, electricity, thermal, energy? Sure, there are, there are a number of, of solutions that, that we and other folks in the energy space in Vermont are trying to help folks uh, to work through. There are, there are solutions using existing technology that can help we know that those things come in an upfront cost. Mm -hmm. And so trying to make those affordable for everybody to access is really important. Trying to make it so that we, uh, we prioritize access for those who are, are less, uh, have been traditionally less able to access those programs is really important. So how we prioritize, how we prioritize funding within existing programs uh, really matters to make sure that everybody can participate in the process. Yeah, you, you lay out some of the costs uh, that are uh, ways for families to improve, mm -hmm. but if you compare the, the median income in some of these communities versus the costs of some of these improvements, yes. the income would be wiped out by some of the costs. Sure. Uh, there's got to be programs out there that uh, will help the most burdened communities uh, try to be, I guess, more green, right? Sure. So as we think about, you know, that we have uh, pretty significant uh, climate goals in this state. Yeah. And the, in order to address those climate goals, we need to have everybody be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. And right now we have those with, the, with higher incomes able to access 
program stories leak because most of the energy programs we have and the energy efficiency programs we have provide you with cost savings in the long run. Right. But it's that upfront cost that is the burden. And so what Efficiency Vermont is designed to do and others in the space is to reduce those upfront costs to make it more accessible to do the larger projects that are going to have the most income uh, impact in the long run. Let's talk about those projects and those programs. Sure. If, if there was a project that you would uh, suggest to a family out there that hasn't done anything to their home right now, what would be the most cost efficient yeah. thing to do to their home? So there are a number of things that are uh, that are that you could that could approach. The thing to do to start with is to is to reach out to us and to do, you know, something simple like a, we have these things called we call virtual home energy visits, mm -hmm. which is we started during the pandemic, you know, without having to have somebody in your home. You can do it on your own time. You walk around with a smartphone and show <laughs> us what your home looks like. Right. Show us what your energy system looks like. Show us what your insulation and your doors and windows look like so we can figure out what those sort of starting places are for you. Because it's a daunting process, right? You, every home is different. Yeah. And so every and every family and every lifestyle is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And so trying to figure out what solutions make sense for you, what you might be able to take on yourself, what you might need a contractor for, uh, what purchases are coming up in the near future. Um, we all have big capital equipment purchases that we need to make from time to time, yeah. whether that be a new car or a heating system right. or something large that, you know, generally we're speaking, we hope continues to work, but at some point we have to replace it. We'd love to be able to think through with you kind of what your options are as you're coming up to that decision. Yeah. So that when the moment strikes, when your car needs to be replaced or your hot water heater needs to be replaced, we can help you at that point get into something that you've already been thinking about that might be more efficient in the long run. Is it is it realistic to think that we can close the gap between the communities that are, say, in Chittenden County and St. Albans and some of the more populated areas and close the gap as far as um, the uh, equitability of energy with, with the rural areas sure. in the state? Uh, so I think there's a couple of pieces in there. One that has to be our f a, a fundamental goal. Yeah. Uh, we have approached energy efficiency from, you know, over the over the test of time as something that we're trying to do it as cost effectively as possible, mm -hmm. which means we want to go get the cheapest energy efficiency savings possible right. because that benefits everybody on the grid. Mm -hmm. But that means that that certain people don't haven't been able to participate. And so we need to try to close that gap as much as possible. And it needs to be an important goal that we seek to achieve. What we're seeing is there's variability across communities, right? Traditionally, uh, you know, if you look at our past versions of our report and even in, in the sort of town level data, Chittenden County is, is a great example where we have natural gas available, which tends to lower the energy burden mm -hmm. and higher income levels across the region. But when you start to dig down into the census block group data and look at you know, a specific part of Burlington or a specific right. part of Winooski, you start to see that variability where there are higher energy burdens. We've seen that in places like Barrie where the highest energy burden in the state is actually a part of southeastern Barrie City where, uh, where it's primarily a function of income levels. And we've seen in, in the recent flooding that's occurred, those, um, those communities where there is high energy burden and flooding impact are often related. Yeah, speaking of yeah, speaking of Barry, uh, you made some more big news this week. Uh, tens of millions of dollars being made available uh, through ARPA and uh, and through the state to those impacted by the flooding. You're replacing essential cooling and heating equipment. Who qualifies? How does this work? Sure, this uh, came about quickly after the flooding. Uh, we sat down with the with with the state and with uh, both the executive branch and legislators to figure out what we could do. Mm -hmm. Identified an a, a existing pot of funds that was available that could be pivoted quickly towards uh, flood relief activities. Um, the legislature uh, and the governor concluded that it should be. Uh, uh, focused on low and moderate income populations, which uh, are defined as up to 120% of the area median income, which mm -hmm. is a fancy way of setting a threshold and, and sure. saying below that, based on your the size of your household, uh, you'd be eligible. 
Uh, we will be looking to help folks replace heating equipment, domestic hot water, uh, basic appliances that are necessary with the goal that this would be additive to what people are receiving either from FEMA or if they're in a county that wasn't eligible or hasn't been determined to be eligible yet where they could access some resources to help them get back on their feet because heat and hot water are the priority for come this coming winter. They're going to be essential. Uh, who's declaring that this equipment doesn't work in each of the homes? Is it the state? Is it you? Is it FEMA? Who, who will uh, so be doing primarily it? It, uh, it has been, you know, sort of there's the, there'll be a self attestation process around sort of, yes, we received flood damage. Yep. This equipment isn't working. Um, it'll, uh, we want folks to have where eligible to go through the FEMA process first mm -hmm. so they can access as many resources as possible. And then from there, uh, we would add to that, that pie. So that was that first $10 million. We also announced a total of $36 million yeah. because working with the state, we were able to help move um, some other ARPA dollars that are around uh, electric panel upgrades and replacements for uh, moving into things like heat pumps and electric vehicles, as well as uh, heat pump hot water heaters, which are one of the single best things that you can do uh, to reduce your energy burden because they're incredibly efficient. Um, so we're going to move some additional dollars there as part of the whole package. And we were able to identify some work uh, to do some uh, some business support as well with about a million dollars to because we know that that's a, another huge gap uh, in the process. All right. Peter Walk, thanks for joining us this morning. Happy to be here. That program goes live on Tuesday, September 5th. It'll be limited to $10,000 a household. Efficiency Vermont is stressing people start with FEMA, get those inspections, get an estimate on the work needed, then reach out to them to get this grant. Otherwise, you could lose out on the FEMA money. Still to come.